Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing another vibration and resonance analysis video, this time of the iFlight XL5 frame. Now this is particularly interesting because this frame is available as a bind and fly. The iFlight Nazgul 5 HD is a bind and fly quad with a Cadex Vista that uses the XL5 frame. I'll put some links down in the video description if you want to check uh, either the XL5 frame out or the Nazgul 5 HD bind and fly. But let's take a look at this quad, see how the frame performs from a vibration and resonance standpoint, and also see how potentially you can improve the performance of the frame. And also, um, as I know a lot of you have asked, some filter recommendations for this frame as well. So let's get into it. So for those of you who followed my channel for a while, you'll know how this goes. But if you're new to the channel, iFlight were kind enough to provide me with the CAD of this frame for the analysis. And I used the CAD that they provided along with material models that I've been developing over the last few months to build a finite element model of the quad in simulation space. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to everyone who is kind enough to provide me with gyro scaled black box logs from their Nazgul 5 HDs and their DIY builds of the XL5 frame. I used those logs that they provided to validate the simulation that I had prepared of the frame and compare the results of the simulation against the black box logs to make sure that it's accurate. So let's look at the results. So the log we're looking at today is what I felt was the most representative log of the Nazgul 5 HD bind and fly quad. And having looked at lots of logs, I think that the results from this analysis are also going to be quite applicable to DIY builds of the XL5 frame. And the first thing we can see is that there are two broad humps in the noise plot that correspond well to these two lowest resonant frequencies. Then the third resonant mode is a slightly sharper peak at about 150 hertz. And then the fifth resonant mode is really well aligned with this again, rather sharp peak at 225 hertz. And if we come over to the waterfall plot, we can see that characteristic vertical stripe that uh, is very typical of a frame resonance. And that occurs at 150 and more strongly at 220 hertz. And the two resonant modes at very low frequency are particularly troublesome because they're, they're difficult to filter out. And what we'll see is that these two modes are due to the antenna mounting. Now the other modes, that 150, 175 and 225 hertz mode from the simulation, are frame resonances. And they're, they're really quite well separated. So iFlight has done a really good job on that aspect of the frame design. We've not got lots of modes that are very close together. The modes are nicely separated in frequency. And it's quite interesting that we don't see any evidence of the fourth mode at 175 hertz on roll, um, but we will, we will see it on pitch when we look at that. So if we look at the D term now, and I think the D term is really important because the noise on the D term really determines the maximum amount of gain that you can have on the D term in the PID controller. And that maximum D gain really controls the maximum P gain that you can, you can achieve. And that P gain controls the responsiveness of the quad to your stick inputs and also how aggressively the quad responds to stabilize itself against outside interference, um, turbulence, prop wash, and things of that nature. And you can see that those first two modes really appear very strongly in the D term noise plot, the uh, 58 hertz mode and the 81 hertz mode. And then we see a little bit of the 150 hertz mode and a little bit of the 225 hertz mode, but they're much, much lower um, level than the, the first two modes. So as we can see, these low frequency vibrations are really hitting the D term hard. And because the frequency is so low, they're really impossible to effectively filter because 58 hertz and 81 hertz, I mean, those are frequencies very similar to what you might expect for prop wash and other aerodynamic effects of that nature. So you really want to be sensitive to those frequencies and you really don't want any noise at those frequencies. 
So in order to really improve the performance of this quad, we need to get rid of these first two modes before we can really unleash the full performance of the frame. If we look at pitch, again, we can see the first two modes appearing quite clearly. And then we can see the fourth resonant mode at 175 hertz, but we don't see much of the 150 hertz resonance at all. And the 225 hertz resonance also appears quite clearly as a sharp peak. And if we look at the waterfall plot, we can see again these characteristic vertical stripes of a frame resonance. We can really see that those antenna modes, which we're going to discuss in, in more detail later on, are still present low down uh, on the pitch axis. So they're affecting both pitch and roll pretty much equally. If we look at the D term, again, it's a similar story to on the roll axis. Those first two antenna modes are really prominent. And then we really don't see very much of anything else because the low pass filter on the D term is filtering that out quite effectively. So we really can see that the, the pitch D term is still dominated by the antenna modes. The frequencies are too low for us to really effectively filter them. And we really need to address those two modes to, uh, to be able to get the full performance out of the frame. So let's look at these antenna modes. The response at about 60 and about 90 hertz. We can see that the lowest antenna mode has the antenna wobbling up and down on its TPU mount. So the antenna is relatively stiff and it's got quite a bit of mass at the end where the, where the actual active element is. And that mass on the end of that long arm is able to waggle up and down on the TPU mount and it creates quite some vibration. If we look at the second mode, we can see that this mode has the antenna waggling from the left to the right. So the TPU mount is obviously a little bit stiffer in the left right direction than it is in the up down direction. And that means that we get two modes at slightly different frequencies, but both of those modes are creating a significant amount of vibration that's making it through to the gyro in the flight controller. The problem with this is that these frequencies are very low and a low frequency vibration is very difficult to filter out because those low frequencies are what we actually want the gyro to be listening to. We want the gyro to be sensitive to prop wash oscillation, to aerodynamic buffeting and other things that occur at around these frequencies for a five inch quad. So the upshot is I would really not recommend mounting antennas like this due to the vibrations that they create. So I would consider a stubby antenna or perhaps a more flexible antenna that you can restrain to the arm so that it can't move around. Whatever you do, whether you choose a stubby or a, an antenna and you mount it in another way, the aim is to avoid this long straight element with a mass on the end that has a flexible coupling to the frame that's able to wag around like the tail on a dog. We, we really want to avoid that. And if we can do that, the rest of the resonance performance of this iFlight frame will be really, really excellent. So this is the first thing that we want to address and is currently the limiting factor for the tune on this particular build. Let's look now at the response at 150 hertz, which is the first proper frame resonance that this, uh, this iFlight XL5 frame has. So this is a very typical frame resonance for uh, a quadcopter. We have the opposite motors on the diagonal moving together up and down. We can also see that the antenna is still participating in this mode and that means it's increasing the mass participation factor of this mode because its mass is moving. And that means it's gonna make the vibrational mode worse than it would otherwise be. Now we can see from the black box log and from this simulation that this mode mainly affects the roll axis. We don't see much effect on pitch at all. If we look now at the response at 175 Hertz, this is another very typical frame mode for quadcopters. Here we just have all of the motors moving together up and down and the quad is kind of bouncing up and down in the air. Notice how the battery being mounted slightly back of the COG, that's the center of gravity, couples the mode strongly onto the pitch axis. 
because by that center of gravity being moved slightly back, now that bouncing mode is combined with a tilting of the quad forward and back, which is going to be picked up by the pitch axis of the gyro. And this really matches with what we see in the black box logs, where this mode is not visible on the roll axis really at all, but quite strongly visible on the pitch axis. And uh, it's all because that COG isn't quite centered. Now, obviously, if you were to add a GoPro onto the front of this frame, that would change the COG. But I think this is a really good point to make here that the center of gravity of the quad, the center of mass, should really be as central as possible. It doesn't have to be necessarily where the flight controller is, but it does need to be central to the arms. Also, it's worth mentioning here that the antenna is still participating in this mode and increasing the, the amount of vibration because of its mass moving around. So let's look at the response at 220 hertz. So this is the fifth resonant mode of the frame. And this is the torsional mode that affects uh, traditional frame designs such as this one. Notice how the motors are twisting on the ends of the arms and the way it's affecting both the roll and the pitch axis simultaneously, just as we would expect from looking at the black box logs. Also, again, the antenna is still participating, so it's, uh, it's not helping matters here. Looking at the yaw axis, we can see that the yaw axis here is exceptionally clean um, for this frame. That's a really, really great yaw axis. And we can see that there are a couple of modes that are affecting the yaw axis, maybe just slightly. We can see a slight uptick in the noise um, and that that matches really well with what we see in the waterfall plot where we have just a couple of these vertical bands which are very, very telling that that's a frame resonance. Whenever you have a vertical band like this, it's always going to tell you that, that there's a potential for a frame resonance there because it's saying that the vibration is staying at the same frequency even while the motor speed is changing. So that means it's unlikely to be just due to the motor noise. It's, there's something inherent there at that frequency that's being excited and it's being excited even at different motor speeds. So if we take a look at the response at about 300 Hertz, we can see immediately why this is so visible on the yaw axis. This mode is primarily a, a yawing mode. So all of the motors are twisting on the ends of the arms and the body of the quad is yawing left and right in response to that. We can see that even at these high frequencies, we still get the antenna participating. So it's, it's still not helping us. And um, that this is primarily to do with the torsional stiffness of the arms that govern this mode. So let me give you some filter suggestions now for the iFlight Nazgul 5 HD and the XL5 frame in general. Please, 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 for the love of FPV, do not mount a long, stiff antenna out of the back of this frame on the TPU mount. It, if, you, if you do nothing else from watching this video, please change that antenna mounting to a stubby. If you don't change that antenna mounting, you really are limiting the tune that you can get with the frame. Once you fix the antenna mounting, you can set the lower limit of the dynamic notch and the RPM filters. Make sure they're below 150 hertz so they capture the first resonant mode of the frame. So I would say about 100 hertz for the dynamic notch, about 100 hertz for the RPM filters. This frame is wonderfully clean based on the logs that I've seen. So gyro low pass filters should not be required for most builds with this frame, and they should all be disabled to reduce phase delay. For the D-term, a 100 Hertz static biquad filter is appropriate. Again, if and only if the antenna mounting has been changed to eliminate those low frequency vibrations. I hope you enjoyed this analysis of the iFlight XL5 frame as used in the Nazgul 5 HD bind and fly quad. I particularly hope this video helped you if you own this frame or the quad, or you're trying to decide whether you want to buy the frame or the quad. If you enjoyed this video and you like these deep dive technical analyses of different parts of FPV, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my 
filter and PID tuning guide. I'm currently working on it and it will be live on my channel very, very soon. If you'd like to see how a different type of frame performs when subjected to the same analysis, I'll put a link to my frame, the AOS 5, down in the video description. Uh, I'd love if you'd check that out. I think you'll find it really interesting. That's all what I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.